Hey everyone, Jason here, digital marketing consultant. Let's go ahead and get the Facebook pixel firing using Google Tag Manager. Timestamps below along with a link to a super deep dive Tag Manager course that goes through setting up all your other tracking codes. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now the good news is Facebook actually has a direct integration with Tag Manager and I recommend using it, especially if you're just getting started. You can always change up the in installation to get more advanced in the future. So let's go ahead and start over on Facebook. You're going to want to navigate navigate to your ads manager. I know Facebook keeps changing the interface and always looks a little different. But once you've gotten to your ads manager, you go ahead and click on your icon here and then we're going to want to navigate to events manager. So again, these menus might be a little different because I'm using a business manager account and you might just have a, a solo one. Um, but it, wherever, whatever type of account you're using, events manager, keep talking over myself here. And then you're going to click on add events. Now, if you've never done this before, there's going to be a giant blue button to install the pixel and that's what you're going to click on. So we'll go ahead and click on add events here. And we're going to say from a new website when we drop down. So from a new website, I'll, we'll talk about from a pixel later. And then we'll just go ahead and use a partner integration. Now the manual code and partner integration, they install it the pretty much the exact same way unless you're doing custom coding stuff. So you might as well just use the partner integration and save yourself some copy paste. So we'll go ahead and use partner and we'll click on Google Tag Manager here. Click on continue. And then you, of course you'll choose the account that you want to, that is the manager of your tag manager. The manager of your tag manager. Okay, how many times are we gonna say manager? And then of course you can click the drop down if you have multiple accounts. So I'm just going to do fresh fans and we only have one container here. So we'll come over here to finish setup. And just like that, the Facebook Pixel is now on your site, firing, ready to go. Yes, there's there's no confirmation, there's no message that says, hey, we're good to go. So we will, in a later section, actually go into Tag Manager and you can see how it was installed. But since we're already here, we might as well set up an event. Now, one of the big advantages of Tag Manager is you can set up some triggers or what they call triggers, Facebook calls events, pretty much. And you can have those fire for all of your different tracking codes. Facebook, you know, they like to do things differently and they don't really like Google anyway. They don't really don't like Apple for that matter. So they have their own way of creating events or triggers on your site. And I recommend doing it this way as opposed to trying to play with the Facebook pixel code and set up events inside of Tag Manager. So once you get more advanced, you can hire a geek to do that for you. But for now, go ahead and use this interface. If that didn't make any sense, then just ignore the last 15 seconds and go ahead and paste in the website URL of an important page on your site. So go ahead and put in a landing page URL, a checkout page, or a product page here. So we'll go ahead and click on open website. You'll see we'll have this little dialog box and Facebook will actually automatically detect the buttons and forms on the page. So in this particular instance, it has detected a button and text is get access. So that's this button down here. And what we can do is we can go ahead and click on it and then you'll see this little icon here will pop up and Facebook is automatically saying, when people click this button and this form is submitted, we're going to add the event lead. We're going to say they became a lead. And of course, Facebook does this all the time and people spend billions of dollars a year on ads with them. So they pretty have a pretty good idea of what different buttons are supposed to do on a website. So we can go ahead and click on this and then we can edit it and in the drop down, we can change what the action is. So maybe this button is actually a purchase button or add payment info. So this is really important for e-commerce because you're going to want to track all of those different steps to figure out where people are dropping off in your checkout sequence. So we'll go ahead and select lead here and I'm just going to cancel because I didn't actually make a change. And then we can just click on finish setup and then we can finish. No, we don't want to give feedback. And just like that, we've now set up a custom event on our landing page. So you can do this for each one of your important pages on your website. Now, if you're doing anything with e-commerce or Shopify, there are other ways to get this done on scale because obviously you're not going to want to click on every single product page you have to do this. So when you're just getting started, make sure you at least go through this process for your checkout pages and your checkout process. And then you can always get more advanced later with your individual product page tracking. So let's go ahead and click on continue, close out this dialog box here. We're done with this setup wizard. And now it's time to 
talk about how you can go back to that interface. So you don't have to do all the events right now after you've set them up. So all you need to do is click on add events here. And instead of from website, like we just did to set up our pixel, you can click from pixel. So when we click from pixel, you can go ahead and open the event tool and then you'll be able to drop in the URL, go through the exact same process. So you don't have to do everything right now. And since we know how to set up events, let's go ahead and double check and verify that our tag was actually installed inside of Tag Manager in the first place. Although that interface won't work if Tag Manager wasn't installed, but we'll just go through where on earth Facebook put it inside of Tag Manager. So you'll see here, the last container was published 11 minutes ago, just editing and, and screenshots, right? So what we can do is we can go to our versions here. And when we click on our versions, you'll see there's a latest live. And when I click on it, we'll be able to see the Facebook Pixel ID. Now, this is the same Facebook Pixel that we installed inside of the Facebook Ads Manager. And if we exit out of this and go back to our workspace here, we can go ahead and click on Tags, and then we can click on the Facebook Pixel, and we'll be able to see the custom code that was dropped in. So if you want to do this manually, all you do is go through the usual process you'd go through for setting up a tag. And the only difference is you would click on custom HTML and then drop in your Facebook pixel code. So that's all the integration does. It just drops in the, all of the code right there. So I'll go ahead and exit out of this. And I do recommend saving your pixel ID to some internal documentation so you don't have to go back and forth between all of your different accounts to get what you need. So I'll link up in the cards and the description to our Tag Manager playbook. It's the same organization file that we use when we're setting up Tag Manager accounts for clients and ourselves. It's just a great way to make sure that you have all of your codes and all of your IDs and tags in one easy to find place. So now let's go ahead and jump into Tag Assistant because there is another way that we actually want to make sure that on the live site that things are actually working. So what you can do is go to your landing page or go to your home page. Any page on your site should do. And then just go ahead and refresh the page. And if you have Google Tag Assistant installed, you'll see that you'll be able to see Tag Manager. You'll see other things that are installed, but you won't actually be able to see the Facebook Pixel. And that's because, well, face, the Facebook Pixel just does not show up inside of Tag Assistant. So what you need to do is download the Pixel Helper from Facebook. So what we'll do is we'll go over to Google to find the thing from Facebook. So we'll go to Google or your favorite search engine, just, fa just search Facebook Pixel Helper. And once we click on it here, you'll be able to add it to Chrome and we'll just add the extension and we'll go ahead and exit this out. We'll go back to our page. And once we refresh, you'll see that the Facebook Pixel Helper is able to see the pixel. It will give us the pixel ID. So you'll be able to see all the different pixels if you have more than one. And then of course the automatic event page view, but we're not seeing lead and we shouldn't because the lead act event has not transpired. So if you wanted to test out whether or not your events were working, we could go down on this page, enter our email and click on the button. And then the Facebook Pixel Helper should show us that an event Tr event trigger. I want to say trigger, but triggers for tag manager. So, so an event pick the event pixel has fired. There we go. Tags and pixels. Oh my. And with that, the Facebook pixel is on your site, ready to go. So two more sections here, just some basic overviews of some advanced things you can do with tag manager. That's going to be very helpful to you in the future. So the first one is preview mode. So if you've done anything with tag manager in the past, you've probably seen this orange dialogue box where you could go in and see how your different tags and pixels were firing and making sure things are working correctly here. Tag manager has actually created a new preview mode called the tag assistant, not to be confused with tag assistant, the Chrome plugin, they're just named the same thing. So anyway, all you need to do is click on preview mode. Although I've skipped ahead to installing more tags so you can kind of see how this works out. So this is more than just the Facebook pixel. So you can see all the tags on our site and you'll see the firing triggers are not all pages. You'll see one here is not supposed to fire unless someone has actually entered their information, kind of like what we did with the lead event on our landing page. So what we can do is we can come over here to preview mode, type in our landing page again, and then we'll go ahead and click on start here and it will open up in a new tab or window. And once you see this dialog box, you know that the landing page has been connected to the Google Tag Manager preview mode. So we can go back over to our other tab here. Yes, we're connected, click on continue. And now you can see all of your tags and pixels that have fired and the ones more importantly that have not. 
Now the big downside of the way that Facebook has currently set up their events and using their interface, as easy as it is, it's not going to show up here. So we're going to see the Facebook pixel fire on every single page. You can also come over here and click to see Google Analytics but you won't be able to see the events that have fired. So just keep in mind that if you're not seeing your Facebook Pixel events inside of this preview mode, it's not because preview mode is broken, it's just because preview mode cannot see it because those triggers were not set up inside of Tag Manager, everything's happening inside of the Facebook Pixel and it just can't see what's going on. So to exit this preview mode, all you need to do is click this X and then you'll see it's not connected. And once you do, you'll see some previous sessions. So what is really nice about this is similar to what the Facebook Pixel Helper will do on your site. If you go through the checkout process, you can see all the events that have fired. You can also do that using the preview mode here and you'll be able to see all of your other tags and triggers that are firing. So it's a really good way to make sure that all of your tags, triggers and pixels and everything else under the sun is firing when it's supposed to and collecting the information that is supposed to because there's a lot of things like we could go into the data layer, but I won't get into that right now. And the second to last check is to make sure that you have actually removed your previous install of the Facebook Pixel. That way you don't have the Pixel on your site firing twice. And when it comes to figuring out what's not working with some of your other tags, of course the Facebook Pixel should be working correctly, Google's Tag Assistant, the Chrome plugin, will be an invaluable resource in helping you figure out what's wrong with your tags or triggers. And of course, all these different colors mean different things. Green and blue, pretty much you're good to go. Yellow means there's probably something that is blocking your particular browser from letting things fire correctly. And red means it's not working at all. And of course, you can just Google search whatever the codes or problems are. So thank you so much for watching. Sincerely hope you have the Facebook Pixel with Tag Manager firing on your site correctly and you have some insights as to how you can start becoming more advanced with your tracking and analytics. So hit that like button, subscribe for more deep dive marketing videos just like this one. And until the next, keep building the business you love.